Thank you for coming today. It's quite cold outside, but with God in our side, we are always hot. <laughs> amen, amen. Alive and kicking. So this is our uh, tithes and offering time. So uh, if you have, if you need, uh, what's the solely envelope? So I think you can ask from her in charge of the the, the, the usher there, Cecil, I think. So I just want to read this to you because my husband. Uh, mentioned it as well that uh, the, the second wave of COVID has come to to Alberta province actually, but it's not just, I think it's whole yeah. whole, whole world at, at, again. But you know what? We are not included in that because we don't belong to this world. Although we are in this world, but we are not of this world. That means we don't belong to the economy of this world as well. We are in the heavenly economy, which means that let you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There is no famine in heaven, so there is no famine here on earth if we are the child of God. But the key for that, okay, I'm just telling you the truth, but the key for that is to give our tithes and offering to the Lord because God is waiting for us to partner with him in this area so, so that he can release the blessing. So I just want to read it to you uh, in uh, uh, Psalms 27, verse 19. This is one of my favorite as well. In times of disaster, they will not weather. So I'm just like connecting it to our tithes and offerings. So if you are a tither, if you are a giver in times of disaster, they will not weather in days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. So this is so powerful verse. So I, I wanted to declare it even if you are in your house. In the midst of famine, we will enjoy plenty. Only the children of God can have access to these promises because it will not belong to, to outside of the family. So can we just stand and we are going to declare? I want you to declare it because you know, you work so hard with that money. The Lord doesn't really need your money. We need the money to pay the rent, to, you know, to, to give us some of our expenses here. But your sacrifice, okay, will reach to heaven and God will honor those who honor him. So you hold your envelope and you declare it with all your heart that the blessing will come to you financially as well. Uh, so if you want to give it also e-transfer, or check, you can write it also uh, Southside Victory Choice, I think, and also contact Miss Cecilia Isguera for more information. So you can also do it transfer. So can we just declare now the, 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 the declaration, okay? We sow our finances into the kingdom of God. Every dollar we produce for God and for us. Lives will be changed, bodies will be healed, and Satan will be stopped. It will produce for us good measure, press down, shake it together, and running over will God be back to us that we may give again. We count it as done in Jesus' name. Amen. To God be the glory. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to church. Um, it's quite cold outside, but thank you for coming. Um, the only announcement we have today is the updated uh, schedule for our Bible studies. So for Tuesday, it's going to so it's going to be from Tuesday to Thursday. But for Tuesday and Thursday, it's going to be discipleship Bible study. On Tuesday, it will be led by Ate Lorraine and Kuya Chris. Thursday will be by Ate Apet and Kuya Mani. And Wednesday will be couples Bible study led by Pastor Dina and Pastor Fred. So for every couple where you have a partner, um, we encourage you to join. And the singles can join as well? Okay, singles can join as well. Um, yeah, it's not just for couples then. Um, and the yeah, Zoom link is going to be posted in our Facebook page. So if you guys um, want to see that, please follow us on Facebook. And Pastor.
Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, today is a very special Sunday because uh, we are here in Canada. We enjoy the freedom of Canada. This country is a very blessed country, so we are celebrating the Remembrance Day. Okay, although nobody fought for the freedom of Canada because we came from the Philippines, okay, but as we stay here in Canada, we need to speak blessing here because the the more we speak blessing to, to this country, the more God will bless us as well. So we want to uh, we want to realign our this church for what the Canadians are doing as well. So we want to honor the people who fought for the freedom for Canada. Okay, so uh, everybody maybe we will ask everybody to stand and we will pray for the government and we will pray for uh, economy, we will pray for our uh, political stability so I don't know what the Holy Spirit will, will lead us today but I want you to just like uh, like have a heart for this country okay you, you know it's not hidden what's going on in America right now but the Christian are rising up right now in America to pray for their country and same thing with us we need to pray for all, all our country as well because so many people died just to 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 have freedom that we are enjoying right now so we will honor those people okay my husband will do it so i just wanted to reiterate what uh, pastor dina has mentioned that we are basically commemorating uh, the uh, the freedom that we have it's a remembrance day on every year it's the 11th of november so it falls on wednesday so some of you may have your holiday this coming Wednesday. And uh, we remember what the soldiers has done for us, the fallen so soldiers of Canada. So they fought for the freedom of this nation. So what we need to do right now, we are still fighting for the freedom. But this time it is a spiritual freedom. So this is a different fight right now. But we are still fighting for the freedom of this nation. Uh, uh, the freedom that was won by the soldiers in Second World War and First World War. So let's bow our heads together as we declare uh, this country's uh, continuous freedom and for us to stand together in one accord for this nation. Uh, I just want uh, to give about uh, about one minute of silence right now. Lord God, because they welcome us warmly, O Father God, as immigrants to this nation. We stand together for this nation, O Father God, and we fight for the freedom today that was won back in the First and Second World War for those soldiers that sacrificed themselves. We thank you, Lord, for you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for this nation, O Father God. Therefore, we declare and decree that Canada belongs to you, that Jesus is Lord in this nation of Father God. We declare and decree that Canada is the true North, strong and free. We thank you, Lord God. This is a nation of Father God that is blessed because you have said in your word of Father God in the uh, book of Psalm of Father God that, Lord, this nation has a dominion anointing from sea to sea from the rivers to the ends of the earth of Paragat. Therefore, of Paragat, as Canadian citizens of this nation of Paragat, we stand together with this nation and we declare and decree of Paragat the prosperity of this nation of Paragat. We declare and decree of Paragat that even in the midst of pandemic, Lord God, even in the midst of the economic crisis of Paragat, 
Your hands is upon this nation, O Father God. And this nation will rise up, O Father God, in the face of difficulty, O Father God. This nation, O Father God, will be a blessing to many nations. It will be a healing to many nations, O Father God. So we stand together as we commemorate, O Father God, those people who has, Lord, even, O Father God, sacrificed their lives, O Father God, for the freedom of this nation, O Father God. Today, O Father God, there is, O Father God, a transition that will take place in the spiritual realm, O Father God. There's freedom in the spirit, O Father God, among the people, O Father God. I declare and decree, O Father God, today, O Father God, everybody is free, O Father God, to praise and worship you, O Father God. Transformation will take place into the lives of people, O Father God. There's healing, there's deliverance, there's breakthrough, O Father God. And there's a financial anointing that will take place into this nation, O Father God. And God, there will be a revival that will take place, O Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Lord God, I lift up, Lord God, Father, Lord God, even, Lord God, the government of Canada, Lord God. Yes. Lord, Canada, Lord God, is a sheep nation, not a yes. goat nation. I declare and decree, Lord God, yes. revival will take place in our, our nations, Lord God. Revival, Lord God, will take place even, Lord God, the people who immigrated here, Lord God, from other countries, Lord God, I declare and decree, Lord God, Father, Lord God, that there will be, Lord God, Father, Lord God, a dominion, impartation, Lord God, that comes from you, Lord God, that we are here, Lord God, not to be defeated, Lord God, as immigrants, Lord God, we are here, Lord God, Father, Lord God, to prosper yes, and to yes. become a blessing in this country, Lord God, because it is not by accident that we are here in Canada as Filipino, Lord God. You have a purpose, Lord God, so I speak right now, Lord God, destiny for the Filipino here in yes. Canada, Lord, we become a blessing here, Lord God, we become the solution of the country of this problem, of the problem here in Canada, we become the light that shines unto them, Lord, we become the head and not the tail. We become above only but not beneath, Lord God. And Father, Lord God, we are going to take our place, Lord God, as Canadian, Lord God. We will not be the tail, but we are only the head, Lord God. And there will be, Lord God, Father, Lord God, destiny and purpose. We are not here to be defeated. We are not here, Lord God, Father, Lord God, to be, Lord God, Father, Lord God, like something like there's divorce, there's depression. No, Lord God. I said no. We are here, Lord God, to become the solution of the problem, to bring the love of Jesus to bring the family spirit, Lord God, in this nation, in Jesus' name, Amen. 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 So sit down. Thank you for uh, um, fighting for our nation. Okay, we love we love Philippines, but we are here already in Canada, so we need to support the Christian community in Canada. We are they are fighting for a righteous government. So. Uh, Lord, I just speak right now as I share this word. This is so special word, Lord God. And I even I repented of you not to share it earlier. So God, cover me with the blood of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit empower me, Lord God. I'm here, Lord God, as an instrument for you. So God, I cannot do it anything without you, Lord God. What can I do without you? So Holy Spirit, possess me. And let the anointing flow, let the river of life flow as I share your word, that our heart will be open for you, Lord God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding me, Lord. And thank you, Lord God, that today is the day, Lord God, Father, Lord God, that the most special day. Thank you, Lord God, Father. This is an, 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 an unforgettable Sunday, Lord God, for the rest of our life, Lord. We bless you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want you to just... To, to tune in, okay? I just want you to be sensitive because what I'm going to share to you today is very special, okay? Uh, we had a meeting last July with Pastor Greg, okay? Actually, last night I, I was touched with Pastor Greg. I told my husband, I was crying. I asked for forgiveness because sometimes, you know, as a father, like, I, we, I, we are just like a child and we thought that our, our father doesn't love us because he disciplined us and I just felt the heart of Pastor Greg for, for us today. I don't know why I felt that. And uh, I remember it. We met in McDonald in, in Shaughnessy. And then uh, we had a good time there with my husband. And my pastor asked me, Pastor Greg, and he asked me, how's your church? I said, we're doing well, okay. Uh, people are growing in the door, and I'm so proud of all of you here. And he asked me something that is really like it stuck me in, in my heart. He said, Did you preach about the speaking in tongues in your church? And I said, No. He, he 
like straight said, did you, did you speak speaking in tongues in your church? I said, uh, no. Dina, I want you to preach that one. It's because it is very vital, it is very important. And I observed, as he said, that those pastors who refuse to preach that one because they don't want other people to get offended, their church never progress, never grow. And I want you to preach that one as early as you can. And I said, what? Like, it just like stuck in my heart. And I didn't even tell it to other people that Pastor Craig really told me with a loving living. Like, he's just like, not really forced, but like very like declaring to me that do it in your church as early as possible. So, I, this is what I'm going to share to you. So those people who can speak in tongues, I think it's just uh, interesting for me as well. Because this is a very important message. Because this subject, okay, is very, very sensitive that the devil doesn't want these things to happen to the people of God. The devil wants to destroy it, the devil wants to eliminate it. In fact, this, this speaking in tongues uh, uh, subject, okay, I don't know how to say that. It divided churches. It offended a lot of people, and you know what? I came from a denomination, I love my, my denomination, that thought in the pulpit that this speaking in tongues is from the devil. I grew up with this kind of mentality, okay, because they didn't realize that there is a higher power that God is giving us as a gift for us to win the battle that is so like like you don't like something like you don't need to work hard just work smart okay you don't need to pray hard just pray smart and this is the things that i want you to have an access with this speaking in tongues it doesn't mean if you don't speak in tongues you are inferior in the in the in the family of god or you are superior if you can speak in tongues now this is nothing to do with salvation Okay, everybody, you receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you go to heaven if you die. But there is a lot of advantage. A lot of people say, wow, what's an advantage, okay? There's a lot of advantage if we know how to access this gift. And I don't want you kind of people to be defeated because we, I don't teach you here in the pattern. I don't want it. I just, I just declare that she kind of victory church people will be a spirit filled speaking in tongues, children of the Lord. Okay, just declare. So I want you to be to be like be sensitive with this. Because I just laid down the foundation first, okay? Because this is so new to so some of us. Like David, okay, the reason why so many people, some of you speak in tongues but you never exercise it as well. So many people, few people only want to do it is because they don't know the benefits, the advantage of speaking in tongues. Nobody's teaching them, okay? So if you just know what you have to speak this, kababa kada shante kedido kada takadaba, it's a mystery, it's a language that they can speak our spirit to God, okay? So I just want to lay down the foundation first. Like example, David, okay? When David went to the battlefield because his father asked him, go send lunch to your brothers, okay? And he saw this giant, okay? And then he said, what is he doing? Why he is uh, why he is uh, cursing the, the 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 soldier of the Lord? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And then some of the soldiers told him that no, do you know that nobody can kill the, the, the Goliath, nobody can kill the giant? And then David asked, okay, what is the reward if I'm going to kill the giant? Okay, because some of us didn't even know that there's a reward for us if we speak in tongues. Okay, there's an advantage. So David is a businessman. Okay, what what are the rewards? And then the, the soldier told him that the reward is the king will give you great wealth. You can read it in First Samuel chapter seventeen. The king will give will let you marry the princess. Wow, imagine that from a shepherd boy to become the son-in-law of the king. Okay. And also free tax for the whole family. And David said, Oh, I'm in. Okay. I mean, free tax. I don't mind with the princess. Okay. Free tax. I mean, 
imagine if you don't if you don't pay your tax for the rest of your life and the whole family. So that's why David killed Goliath because and then he went again to another other soldier. What is the what is the reward? Can you tell me what's the reward? And then yeah, same again. He they already told him again that this is the reward. And that's why David, if you read it really, it's true, wanted to kill the giant. He was 17 years old anyway. He said, because there is an advantage. And why? I cannot give it to you if there is an advantage to your life. Because God wants us to have a life that is full, overflowing, being fruitful, and we become victorious in life. And so many Christians, I came from that denomination, okay? We live a defeated life. We are a son of God. But we live a defeated life is because we didn't know that we have access to this power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And if you read it in uh, uh, John, okay, chapter 16, France line, the meaning of the speaking tongues, that the disciple, like they have they hung up with Jesus for three and a half years, and, and when the Jesus already wants to, to go back to the Father because he knows it's his time, okay, to die on the cross, okay? And Jesus told them, okay, that but now I go away to him who sent me, means the Father, okay, before he went to the Father. And none of you ask me, where are you going? Because the disciples thought that Jesus will live forever and overturn the government of Rome so that Jesus can be the king. That's what their, their, their uh, mindset before. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart because where are you going? I thought you will live forever, you will not die. Has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage. Again, advantage. That I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So the helper, who is the helper? The Holy Spirit. So you mean these disciples, they, they experience the power of God, okay? But they, they said they don't have the Holy Spirit is there because Jesus said, if I will not go, go away, the helper, the helper, which is the Holy Spirit, will not come. So that means some of you maybe have a have puzzle that so you mean I don't have Holy Spirit? The moment you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit will reside in you. But this kind of Holy Spirit is will be upon you to fill you up. Okay, it's not in you, but it's upon you to fill you up so that you will have more power. Okay, so this is what Jesus said, that the, the helper. And maybe some of you will ask, so why is it that Jesus wants to go away? Because you know why? Jesus was so powerful. Okay, he opened the blind eyes. The disciples saw it. If the disciple cannot cannot cast out demons, he said, Jesus help us to cast out demons. If the disciple they experience storm, Jesus help us to calm the storm. The disciple experience that they don't have enough food, and Jesus multiplied the food for us. Everything Jesus did. But no matter how Jesus did all these miracles, he is still in flesh and blood. So he's still limited. I hope you understand this one. He's still limited because he's only in one place speaking the word, doing one thing, and at, in, 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 at the same, like not really like anywhere because his flesh and blood is limited with the, although he's the son of God. So what could be more uh, uh, like the best thing that happened into their life to be with the son of God? That's why they, they, they couldn't understand why we need the, this helper that you are with us now. You are the best thing that happened to our life. You are the son of God and we believe in you. And you go away. Who is this helper? Okay? And if you remember it, okay, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, I don't know if I give you to translate. Um, when when Jesus, okay, I just want to, to, to just the foundation, okay? When, when Jesus was one year old, did Jesus do, did a miracle? He didn't do miracle. When Jesus was 12 years old, it was recorded. But did he do any miracle for that? He never did miracle. When he was 20, no miracle. He was 29, no miracle. The spark that Jesus 
started performing miracle when he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So you could be a son, you could be a daughter, you could be active in the church, but you cannot do supernatural things in your life. You cannot experience this one because even Jesus himself cannot do anything until he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He is already the Son of God. You could be a son, but you are limited as well. So that's why this is the advantage of speaking in tongues. So when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. So the Holy Spirit empowered him, came to him. Okay? Did Jesus have the Holy Spirit before? Yes, but this is a different one. And the moment he was baptized, he was 30 years old, that's the start that he multiplied the bread, that's the start that he, he I was that turned the water into wine, he raised up dead, cast out demons, and walked into water, everything he did. But he never did it according to that he is the Son of God. He did it according to the power of the Holy Spirit. According to the power of the Holy Spirit. So because even if you are a son of God, like us now, if you are not going to have this kind of access, you don't experience the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. So I hope you understand this one. Because God wants us to have this access. I don't want you to be like, okay, in, in like Abraham, okay, I'm just telling you. Uh, when Abraham, it took 14 years for Abraham to obey totally to the Lord. The Lord told Abraham, I want you to leave your country, leave your family, and come. I will give you the city that, that, that God is the one, the builder. So come out from your place, from, from your from your country, from your from your relatives. But eventually he have obeyed it, not really one hundred percent because Lot his nephew, okay, he brought Lot with him. Sometimes if God is telling you to, to have this assignment and you will God never tell you to bring some people and you're going to bring it, it becomes heartache for you and also you cannot really experience the fullness of your of your uh, destiny of your purpose because there's some person who's always pulling you down and this is a time that that at last abraham realized that i want to separate with god because he's not part of my destiny so the moment god at that uh, abraham obeyed the lord so this is what happens do you have any friends like genesis chapter 13. yeah the lord said to abraham after that had separated from him God never told Abraham when Lot was with him, okay? Telling you connection to the Lord, okay? Lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land that you see, I will give to you and you, uh, to you, your offspring forever. Okay? So can you have any other translation, first line? Yeah, so I just want to do that. After Lot had gone, the Lord said to Abraham, Look as far as you can see in every direction. Look up at first and now look as far as you can see in every direction, north and south, east and west. I am giving all this land as far as you can see you and your descendants as a permanent position. So, God can only work to Abraham as far as he could see. I hope you understand this one. God can only work with Abraham as far as he could see. And God said, look up. So that means when the Lord spoke to Abraham, this all that you can see belongs to you. So Abraham, look up. Okay, east, west, north, and south. Wow, this is so big. Imagine if Abraham will do that, like a chicken mentality. Oh, east, west, north, <laughs> okay, this is all. And God will do that, give it to him only. Because God will not work with us if we cannot see it. Because God wants our cooperation. Okay, Jeremiah 29, 11. Okay, that's one of my favorite verses, okay? I know the plan that I have for you, plan to prosper and not to harm you, and give you hope, an expected end that you will really prosperous, you will win in life, you will be the head of the day, you will live a fruitful life, you will be always happy, okay? And in fact, before the creation of the world, if you read it in Philippians, that God already prepared 
your destiny for you before the creation of the world. Imagine that. But the truth is, God wants our cooperation. It is not automatic. You really think it's automatic? No. It's not automatic. God needs our cooperation. That's why he told Abraham, look up as far as you can see. So I want you to have this kind of mentality. Don't limit the power of God into your life. To me, some of you, I don't want it because I grew up with this teaching that speaking in tongues is from the, from, from the devil. Teaching in the pulpit, okay? I grew up with that kind of denomination. And that kind of churches, denomination, I can really see they live a defeated life. And here, I'm teaching it to you because I don't want you to live a defeated life. Okay, so number one advantage of that, okay? I'm telling you, this is so, so vital actually. In fact, this is essential. I, I really like, essential is essential, okay? So if you read it in, uh, hold on. If you read it in Acts chapter one, okay, verse four and five translate. Before, so the reason why Jesus told them, because it, it's essential for me to go away so that you can have the helper, the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus went to heaven, okay, before he went to heaven because he's written from death to life, and then he told, he stayed first for, for 40 days, okay, in spending time with his disciple in his uh, resurrected body. And he told them, don't do anything don't do any ministry. Don't get out from Jerusalem. I want you to wait for the Holy Spirit to tell you that you will be baptized. I don't want you to do ministry yet until you are filled with the Holy Spirit. So this is what happened. And being assembled together with them, he who commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. This is the speaking in tongues, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. They said, don't preach. Don't share the word of God. Don't do ministry until the, you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of Jesus, okay? The denomination that I came from, they said it's not anymore working. That is not, that is obsolete. It will not be applicable. But who? There is nothing like that. Because until now, you know what? During the first birthing of the church in this area, this is because there is no church before. Okay? This is the season that the church is birthed. If Jesus told them, don't do anything. I want you to wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That was the first time that they, they birthed the church. How much more with us right now that we are in the last days? Do you think Jesus doesn't want us to have this kind of access? We are in the last days. The more we needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the more we needed it because we are already in the last days. If God said to them, don't do anything, then how much more with us? especially those who want to serve the Lord. I want you to really pursue the gift of speaking in tongues, okay? I hope you understand this one because I really want you to do that. And Acts chapter one, verse eight, okay? But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the one that you will receive power, okay? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. So it will give you boldness to share the word of God. Okay, so this is so uh, this is so powerful that you do, you 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 know it because you know why God wants us to preach the word of God to share the word of God, but we cannot do it without the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, we cannot do it really. So number one, okay, I just tell you number one uh, benefit of being of, of having access with the, pub, with, the, with the speaking in tongues or the power of the Holy Spirit is we can know the mystery of God. Okay, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, I think, first slide. 
For he who speak in tongues does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him, how, however in the spirit he speaks mystery. So this is a mystery because nobody can understand. But we speak directly to God. Okay, this is mystery. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him, however in the spirit he speaks mystery. So there is a mystery. The hidden truth. Okay? Nobody can understand this one. Okay, just read you. Shakara bamba kata shikri de. Hapa kata santa kata papa. Bipe kata chukara pa. Handa kata tiki tito ka. Achuwa pa kata. Amba kata tiki. Oba pa pa tashi. I said, there is a revival that will come into this country, into this into this nation. I don't know that's what I immediately. Okay? It's a mystery, but I have this access. Because sometimes, okay, I just want to give you that example because too much uh, theory, okay? When December 2019, okay, because I'm talking about mystery, the Lord put it into my heart that Dina, there's something that is big that will happen that is not good to the people. Something big that is not good. Immediately, the Lord spoke to me in my heart. I want you to focus on Psalms 91 because something is going to happen that is not good. So I said, Lord, you mean there's something happened in my husband or my children or my marriage or finances or my family back home? So I was quite afraid with that. I told my husband, there's something happened. But that was December, okay? There's something happened, I don't know what is that. I need us to focus more on Psalms 91. So I called Lorraine, I told Lorraine, there's something happened, I don't know, maybe this is for the poor group. Teach the Bible study about Psalms 91. Everybody must memorize Psalms 91, those people who come to church. Until, it is so strong in my heart, in January I said, I need to preach Psalms 91 because I, I don't know why, this. I felt it that there's something happened that is not good. I preached it Psalms 91, I think, three times in the church in a row. And before that, I declared, no fear, no disaster, no plague, there is no sickness will come, there is no bankruptcy will come, there is no retrenchment in Shekinah Victory Church. I declare it like a wild woman, like it was so powerful that I even like stopped my feet here because I couldn't really control it anymore. And after that, that was January, March, the COVID came. Two months before, the Holy Spirit revealed it to me. It's because I have access to the hidden things of God. And how did I know that? It's because in the house, I always speak in tongues. It's because in the house, I always speak in tongues. I exercise the tongues. So if you keep on speaking in tongues, you have access to the mystery of God. And the mystery is not any more mystery because God will reveal it to you. Because you are praying the perfect will of the Father. God will, will, build, God will give you the right people at the right time, at the right place. God will stop the people that is supposed to come into your life and you will have an idea what to do is because the Holy Spirit will reveal to you the hidden truth because you are speaking in about the mystery. Okay, Psalms, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Franz Lai, can you have that? Thank you, Franz Lai. Franz Lai is very good actually. Yeah, so 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. But it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ear, nor, nor ear heard, nor have I entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I, this is one of my favorite. This is one of my favorite and memorize it by heart. But you didn't even know that in number 10, but God has revealed them to us. Though his, through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So, I always quote this one that, okay, no eyes of sin, no, no ears of hearing, no mind has conceived what God has prepared to those who love him. But if you keep on speaking in tongues, God will reveal it to you through his spirit is because the mystery is not any more mystery to you. Like the way he did it in, in my, like I told you that I preached Psalms 91. It was January, God revealed it to me in December. I told them, memorize this Psalms 91 in January. Did you know that there is COVID that's coming? Because God revealed it to me. Because
because the spirit searches all things. I will know what will happen in China, I will know what will happen in America, and I will know what happened in Asia because God will reveal it to you. The secret is a mystery. So why not go into why not speaking in tongues? If God is like this, why a lot of pastor, a lot of denomination doesn't want these things to happen into your life? I don't want to be accountable to the Lord that my people are defeated because I never teach them. The greatest gift that God is giving to the body of Christ, which is the speaking in tongues. I hope you understand this one. I want you to have this kind of access because I just don't want you to see being defeated in life. Because God knows the end, and God knows your beginning, God knows your middle, and God knows your end. Okay? God knows. But how do you know? You don't know. It's a mystery. So when the moment you speak in tongues, God, you are praying the perfect will of God into your life that you don't even know because your five senses cannot comprehend what God is for you. Do you know that? Your five senses, your, your, your mentality, because for us right now, Okay, they said, like in the, especially in North America, that we are very sophisticated. We are very logical. Okay? We are very, um, like, all these things that it's all about, we are, we are uh, uh, like, thinking about it, if it's possible. But we can access this by faith because we need the Holy Spirit. That's why God said, lead not in your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge Him. We cannot live in our own understanding most of the time if we don't have access in speaking in tongues. Do you know that? Because we cannot have the access of mystery of the Lord. It's really an advantage for us, okay? I hope you understand this one. And number two, what are the things that we can, what are the advantage again? Okay, next advantage for that is it can edify our body or our soul, our, our mind and our 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 uh, strength. Okay, so in in Second Corinthians, First Corinthians, chapter fourteen, verse four, he who speaks in tongues, in a tongues edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. So he who speaks speaks in tongues edifies himself. Edifies means build up. So Jude chapter one, verse twenty, translate. We have it there. Okay, because I really want us to have this. Foundation, okay, just building up the foundation. Jude chapter 1, verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So, building yourself up means edify yourself. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That means if we are going to speak in tongues, it can edify our body, our self, means your will, mind, and emotion. How to edify means if you speak in tongues, if you are sick, your body, you have nose, you have ears, you have heart, you have lungs, you have kidney, you have skin, okay, you have breast, you have uh, intestine. If you speak in tongues, it can edify that because it's your body. I hope you understand this one. It will bring healing to you even if you have depression, the speaking in tongues can heal your depression. I never say that. This is God. Edify. It can strengthen you. It's because there is power in speaking in tongues. And it can even prolong your age. I hope you it can even prolong your age. It's really true. It can sharpen your brain. Do you know that? Because it's edify. Edify your body. It can build up your body. It can build up your immune system. Do you know that? It is God who told this one. No wonder the devil doesn't want us to have this kind of access. Now you understand why so many people get offended with this. Because the devil lied to them that it is not from the dead, that is not from the Lord, but this is really from the Lord. And the more we needed it now. It can strengthen your immune system. It can strengthen your body. It can strengthen your 
your core, it can strengthen your mind, it can strengthen your, your, your heart. Imagine that. Um, I don't know why, uh, maybe I will share it to you, I hope she understands. Uh, there is a friend, okay, uh, he, he has this like uh, depression, okay, depression that came to him because I think he, he lost his job. And then the wife said, I want, I'm interested to speak in tongues because he started speaking in tongues before and then he stopped it, okay, he never spoke in tongues anymore and said, oh, Pastor, I want you to speak in tongues, can you help me? So we have this like Zoom every week said, okay, I will touch, I will, I will let you, together, I will, I will speak in tongues with you because I want you to have this, uh, I encourage her to speak in tongues more because of the situation of her family, of her, of her, of her spouse. I said, okay, I will help you, I will speak in tongues together with you one hour. I said, one hour just for your husband to be healed. So I, we, we spoke in tongues every week. Because I know there's something there. But I also regretted it because I just told them, I, th I just told her, but I never told her about the benefit of, of speaking in tongues. We just like, okay, we just speak in tongues, but I know it can be healing, but there is no backup script scripture for that. So we, we keep on speaking in tongues every week, every week, every week. I don't know how many weeks is that. And after they said, okay, Pastor, I don't need it anymore. Okay, we are okay now. I don't need the speaking in tongues. The moment he, she said that I don't, we don't need it anymore, so I stop it because the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. If the Holy Spirit, I don't need you anymore, then he will just back out because he's a gentleman. He will not force us to do things that we are not really willing to do. It. Okay? We need to pursue God. God wants to be pursued because he's a gentleman. The moment he said no, I think five days only, or I don't know, less than a week or a week maybe, the husband committed suicide because that's how serious the situation is. And I wonder in my mind, Lord, if only she never stopped speaking in tongues together with me, it could not be. It could be a different story. Sometimes it between be, be life and that situation. I hope you understand this one. When we went to so uh, last July or something like that or August, we went to Medicine Hut with my, I, we had a reunion with my cousins because I have another three cousins here and three and a half hours drive. So of course I, I told my husband, you are the one who will preach that day because I want to enjoy my reunion with my cousins. So of course with the cousins, we talk, 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 talk the whole night and I sleep about five o'clock in the morning because <laughs> we just keep on talking. I love them. And then woke up about 6.30 because I need to pack our things in the hotel so that we can go home and have this choice. So I said, never mind, I will sleep in the, in the car because it's three and a half hours drive in, from Medicine to Calgary. So I said, okay, I'm so sleepy, but I have this word that I need to speak in tongues. And why I need to speak in tongues? I'm, I'm tired. I want to sleep so that I can have like energy in the afternoon to come to church. But I cannot sleep. This is the earth. I need to speak in tongues. So I started speaking in tongues from Medicine Hut until we almost we almost here in in in, in Calgary. So speaking in tongues, shakar, ba, 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 ba. I couldn't like. It's like I want to sleep, but I cannot sleep because the, the speaking in tongues is so strong that I need to say that. So I keep on speaking in tongues. I think more than two hours straight, shakar, ba, 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 kata, sikiti, tu, kata, ta, kata, ba, ba, while we're driving. And then suddenly, I told you before, that suddenly in the 22X, okay, my son, 115 uh, kilometers per hour, the driving uh, uh, speed that he has, and suddenly there is one car who blocked us, like immediately. My son has no time to break because it was so sudden and immediately I don't know what happened. He he went to the other to the to the left side and he didn't see it that there's another car in the left. And I just couldn't explain it to you. It seemed that the, the, the road was expanded. Okay? And we go through that one and we were safe. And I realized it just last time. The reason why we didn't die during the day because the enemy really wants to destroy us because of what's going on in Shikaina, that's really I believe. It's because I was sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit that I need to speak in tongues because the enemy already set a trap for us, for us to die. Remember that, my dear, I keep on speaking in tongues inside the car. I was so sleepy, but I obey. 
we need to be sensitive. But how about if you don't have access with that? That's why so many Christians have this accident. So many Christians live in living and defeated life because sometimes the word that you can understand, you, you pray with the word of God. Okay, the word of God is perfect prayer as well. You pray it with your understanding, but sometimes you don't know what is the real problem in the situation. You don't know what kind of prayer you need to pray. Maybe your son is addicted to pornography and you didn't even know because it was hidden, it was secret. Okay? Because you can just access in the computer, in the internet. And you pray for Lord, my son will have healthy body, my son Lord God will do well in school, my son Lord God will not be rebellious, but you don't know that he's doing something in the internet, but you cannot say it because you understand. But speaking in tongues is a perfect prayer. If the moment you pray it, have the picture of your son or your daughter or your family in the like in front of you and speaking tongues. Shakara pakata sikitichu. Ang babakata takata sikitichu kata. Maybe in the cell phone. Shakara ba. You are praying a perfect prayer is because speaking in tongues is a perfect, perfect, perfect prayer. I'm just telling you, I don't want you to be left behind with this. I want you to have a desire to access this one because sometimes between life and death experience. Sometimes between life and death experience, okay? Because, because I want you to have this, this, this like Abraham. The Lord spoke to Abraham. Look up as far as your eyes could see. I will give it to you because the Lord cannot work, cannot give it to Abraham if he cannot see it. Now that you can see, desire for it. Now that you can hear, desire for it is because if you are not going to desire for this, then the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will not force him to come into your life. You are you a son or your daughter? Of course you are. Do you are you going to go to heaven if you will die now? If you don't speak in tongues, of course you will go. But why not settle for less if God can give us the best? I never made it up. It is the word of God. So many evangelical people, they hated this one because the devil lied to them and I don't want. So many pastors in the Pentecostal churches, speaking in tongues, pastor, spirit filled, they don't want to preach it in the congregation because they don't want the congregation to get offended. I don't mind if you get offended. I don't mind that I am accountable to the Lord, that I will not tell it to you, the secret the advantage, the power of speaking in tongues because it sometimes it will be life and death experience. I hope you understand this one because I want you to have this access. It's free. It's free flow. It is just like my son, how to quicken your body. It is like my son Jacob bought a car. It's a very controversial, it's a very controversial car actually. My husband was so angry with that, with the person who sold it to him. And uh, now it's in our garage, okay, and then uh, my, uh, my son, thank you for Mel who, who repaired that one. Mel is very good, he, he repaired that car. And my son, once in a while, especially in the winter, he's going to uh, was that start up the car, okay. And sometimes it will not start. So my, fa my husband will do the starter booster. He, he bought it in Canadian time and he's going to hook it to the battery of the car of my son and then just, I don't know what they're doing, press it there and then suddenly, a few minutes, the car will already start. And do you know that the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues is exactly like this? It can boost your immune system, it can boost the health of your body, it can heal you. It can heal your mind. It can even overcome depression. Okay? It can even make you happy all the time. It's because it's just like that. It's a booster. It can boost your immune system. It can boost your joy. It can boost you actually in the spirit. You become bold. You become powerful. You will become fearless. Because it is an unlimited, it's unlimitless power that you can have if you speak in tongues. A lot of people will ask me because I never work really. Thanks for my husband. 
because it doesn't want me to work. <laughs> so they asked me, Dina, what are you doing in the house? Because my son is already teenagers, okay? My youngest son now is 17. What are you doing in the house? You know, some of them are three jobs, two jobs, okay? You know what? I'm happy speaking in tongues in the house. Do you know that? I speak in tongues a lot in the I speak in tongues a lot in the house. I wash the dishes, I clean the house. I go upstairs, I go downstairs, still speaking in tongues. Because you can't control it. Like, oh, it's maybe like the devil. If you are possessed by the devil, you cannot control it. But if you are the Lord, because the Holy Spirit is a gentleman, you can control it. Sometimes, and I will go to superstore. It's because and your mind is not fruitful means you can do things even if you speak in tongues. You can wash the dishes, maybe you can be in front of the computer working simple job, or you can you can clean the house and then you can still speak in tongues because your fruit your your mind is unfruitful. You don't need to think. It's because there is something in your mind that switch if you speak in tongues. And I'm so happy in the house. And sometimes I feel guilty because I don't calls the friends anymore. Like, why are you not calling me anymore, Dina, like last time? Why did that happen to you? Why you not call me anymore? But they didn't know that I was speaking in tongues in the house. I am spending time with the unlimited, unlimitless power that I have. Do you know the secret why I can stand here in front of you boldly? Not because they are, I, I just read the word of God. Of course, we need to balance it. But because I always speak in tongues in the house. I always speak in tongues. I become prettier and healthier. Woohoo! Amen. <laughs> and it's free. Yes. You don't need to pay for it. We are going to reactivate it tonight. So, friends, like, can you read it in in in, in uh, what's that in uh, Second Corinthians? Uh, no, Acts chapter two, verse verse uh, four, I think. Yeah, one to four. Okay, this is like you will ask me, Pastora, how to do that? Okay, I'm just going to do that. We're almost done. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, so the 50 days after Jesus went to heaven, uh, yeah, uh, after, yeah, when they were all with one accord in one place. So I want us to have be one accord right now in this place because we're going to reactivate it right now. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Okay? Suddenly. God is a God of suddenly. Okay? And next friend's line. Then there appeared to them divided tongues of the of, of, as of, of fire and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay? And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak. So, who will speak? You are the one who will speak, not the Holy Spirit. You are the one who will speak, not the Holy Spirit. Okay? And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them at the rest. So, it was the Holy Spirit who pushed them, but who is the one who will be the speaker? It's your tongue. Okay, so, I want us to, to I want to have an impartation today. How to do it? Because I want you to experience this kind of power. So many pastors, they don't want us to, to do that in their congregation because they don't want people to get offended. But I believe also because the pastor never also to explain to them what are the benefits. If you know the benefits like David, what's the reward? What's the benefits? Okay? And the soldier told him, wealth? And you marry the princess? And then the woman said, not yet. What else? Free tax, okay, I'm in. I can kill the channel, free tax. Mm. <laughs> Same thing here. If it can heal your body, if it can give you the mystery before it will come, it can give you ideas, then, then like David, I'm in now. I can do that. So I want you to stand and I want the people who can speak in tongues. Who can you, who of you can speak in tongues? Can you raise your hands? Okay, thank you. 
And who among you who only speak in tongues, even if you can speak? Some, some of us can speak in tongues, but they don't practice it at home. I want you to practice it at home because the more you speak in tongues, the more you are going to have access for this unlimited, unlimited power that God is giving to us. So I want the music people to come as well, and we will sing. We will sing, uh, Holy Spirit, Chris. You will not come there because I want you to be part of here. Arcelia, do you speak in tongues? Not yet. You're like I think only Jacob. I think only Jacob and Kuya Dan maybe. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord God. Is where is Jacob now? Is Jacob here? Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus God. We will see Holy Spirit, and then I want all of us here. If you want this kind of access to this power, I want you to come in front. And the people who can speak in tongues, you need to face them. Okay, uh, behind them. Okay. Uh, I want you to come here if you want to speak in tongues. And it's not scary, it's very easy because it's you who will speak, okay? So I want you to come here. So I think Eileen, come here, Mel, come here. Don't be shy, don't be shy. Come here because I want us to have this access because if the Lord told them, don't do anything until the, the, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Why not come? Martin and Zion, come here. I want you to come. Hallelujah, Lord God. And we will invite first the Holy Spirit. We will invite first the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus God. And all the people who can speak in tongues, can you start speaking in tongues now behind them? Behind them, because the Holy Spirit is here, press right. Well, just speak in tongues there, you also know. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We will sing, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Hallelujah, Lord God. I want first my husband. Hallelujah, Lord God. Sa karatanda, katadu, katata, katapa, papa, papa, bibibig, kinishin. We will welcome the Holy Spirit. Hindi, thank you, 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 thank you,
Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus, God. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.